Hey folks, it's Bingo Black. It's something like 2 a.m. Central Standard Time. And this is what we got going on. We got a little bit of ink. And then pretty decent amount. Just about everywhere. Uh, I'm going to go over to the graph. We got like a 7.1. It's quite consistent. 7 pointers, 6.7s, a bunch of them. Uh, down in Australia, right way. A lot of graph action. Hawaii's had some 4.3s. I'm going to show you some phone calls, you know, because people call in when they really feel something. Uh, one of the quakes in Hawaii, they only had like 20 something. And then there was, there's one, and then they, you'll see the how many more people called in than the other quakes. And then, uh, so as you see, we got a lot of ink everywhere. We've seen way more of the ink than this before, you know, don't get too worried, you know. If anybody's new to watching this, now you're going to see you'll see responses when you so when they get a pretty good shake like this here, the 30, 34 calls over in Japan where they're pretty used to having all these quakes, or, you know, since ever since the big one a couple of years ago. Now uh, the Hawaii region here is 4.2. This one here, 4.4, 72 people called in on that. So. Uh, and there was a Hawaii one where there was just a few calls, you know, 20 some or something. Yeah, this is here, the 22. So these four pointers, you know, a lot more people ended up calling on those. Uh, also, there was a quake here, if you're seeing in, in the Washington area where, okay, now this one here is only eight, but there's a lot of people. And I think that's the one I seen like a, uh, the Puget Sound region, 162 people called in on a 3.5 up there in Puget Sound. So it's pretty uh, interesting how some quakes will can really make people feel the shaking really damn good. And then you're over in southern Iran, even in their system over there, are phone calls calling in about that 6.3 over there. So uh, Honduras, a lot on that 5.5. So it's interesting to watch the responses of how many people call in on some of the ones and you can just see where, you know, some of them, they feel the quakes pretty doggone good. And they get a lot more calls, i.e. that one there in the Hawaii, 4.4, 4, they got 72 and 54. And then like I say, the smaller mountain ones, they didn't have that, they had like 22 calls. So, uh, and the green is the uh, stuff that's already happened. And then we do get a bit, a little bit of a stability so on like the 18th, you might get a little bit lull directly on the 18th, okay? Like noon on the 18th or something like that. And then factually, that uh, should be able to slide that up there. there. Come on, baby. Okay, so the red ones is a, is a future that you need to keep, you know, at least two days before. And then usually just right at that date, that it'll calm down a little bit because of the magnetic stability of the alignments okay but two days ahead of time and two days after that's when you get some action along with a lot of the asteroids and comets that come flying by and also with uh, the other objects the supergiants that I basically I can nail it down really good with a lot of the humongous supergiants within a few hours Yes, actually even got it down to where I could even actually warn here two years ago, I was able to do it where the idea that the rising and setting of certain huge supergiant stars that could get down to what, how NASA and all the scientific physicists and everything have been meshing all that stuff together with the electrical and so forth to get it down to where they can almost give a good two hour warning of a quake because they used to have the cameras and the sensors that notice the mountains when they start shaking and so forth. So the red ones are future dates. Uh, the blue ones are dates that have already came by and also the greens. Okay. And then as you can see in the future, way the hell out. Okay. But and only, and then there will be more of the normal oppositions and conjunctions and so forth. But uh, usually you get stability just on the date, 
and then it's surprising to get something real heavy so what we're doing is right now I'm going to take you back to the graph and you're going to be seeing why we are getting now these line up so that's your your planets there that are getting your oppositions and your superior conjunctions your elongations perillion euphelions and I'll go into a little bit explaining that here at probably at the end of the video and uh, what you're going to see is we're going to take you and I'll show you the, a full stretch of this and I'll also take you to and then I'll give you also and so what like I'm saying when when the date hits it's usually yours it's usually the most is before two days prior and two days after because it's the just like when you run two magnets together bouncing when you get them together firm it's everything settled down and then two days afterwards and two days before because when they're leaving and as they're coming in they get the uh, the, the shake action and then that shakes the, shakes the earth just like when you're putting two magnets together they kind of like fight each other and then locks on and everything's kind of smooth for that you know 24 hour period that you get the alignments and then after and can be just before and it's usually like 48 hours so just in case you don't trust my list here's some lists from but mine's a little bit more accurate more deep so we'll go off to uh there we are the graphs and then remember your magnitude of your quake is right here and then the depth of the quake is in the kilometers here deep and uh you're going to see some sevens here this might refresh and as you see loganville region png over by australia and you've got 7.1 bunch of 6.7s uh all in the same time area but as you can see we've got what do we got or and it looks like this one here is at a different graph so it's trustable and then it's refreshed but like i was saying um, when we're looking at them when you get a different uh even though it's at the same time you can trust that 7.1 because it's in a different uh there's your your GPS and it's in a different uh, different area it's not very far away but enough that that counts so we got a 7.1 quake basically I'll put their 7.1 quake down because that's 7.1 it's solid and rock solid uh, the time but the, more than likely that's the hardest hit area right there and it's 26 kilometers deep and we got one 63 at 60 kilometers deep, 100 kilometers deep, and a bunch of these 6.7s. These aren't showing the depth on these, but these two show 75 kilometers deep. So we got a 7.1 quake there. Then uh, we'll, we'll see what else we've got going on. And like I say, we'll probably get a lull on Monday. We'll probably get a little bit of a lull on Monday. Can't guarantee it. Uh, but it's very rare to get a major quake right on the exact dead center of a, any kind of aphelion or prillion or alignment. It's usually before and after because it's the shiver shake of pulling away from the magneticism that basically calms for a little while. So we've had this stuff here. Fanatu, 6.7 there. 194 kilometers deep. And that's pretty much the Fiji, Banadu, uh, usually pretty doggone deep. You remember, this is your magnitude line here. So you can see here on the 13th, a lot of stuff has calmed down. And remember, this is a hell of a lot of quakes, okay? Hell of a lot of earthquakes. And the volcano action too. I don't know if I'll go to our RSOE, but 
if you can go to RSOE, go look at that, and it'll show you just about every. It's an emergency thing, but the idea that we there, we've got all kinds of volcanoes active right now, like crazy. And it's not in the mainstream media. It never has, and it's been they've been going. The volcanoes have been highly active, lots of them, for the last two or three years. So. Uh, you get, go back a few days and you get a lot of peak action. So we might get some pretty good shaking up until Monday. So tomorrow I would be aware. Here's some of our action from over at Honshu. Honcho. Honshu, I don't know how to do it exactly pronounce it. 6.5, 10 kilometers deep. Uh, Papua New Guinea area had something like a 6 point something. I think it's 6.6 .6 or something. I don't know if I've seen that here. If I skip, if I apologize, if I skip by it real fast, I'll know here in a minute. So six point action, and like I say, the deep, the depths get pretty good at, at Fiji and so forth. North Atlantic. You know, they could keep constantly. We used to very rarely see that, and that's you know, that's just within the last year we've been seeing this. A lot of five pointers out there in the mid Atlantic the last year and a half. Mexico is going to get some shaking. And I, this is the freshest, decent shot I've got of, you know, Jupiter way the heck off. And then you'll have Venus should be in this shot. And then uh, anything out here to the left could end up being something to do with being something to do with being Ison. Because uh, Ison's off to the left. Uh, take your pick. It's really hard to tell at this point in time. I'll zoom out on this shot here. I have it all up at 999, but that pretty much should be. Venus right there. I mean, uh, excuse me, Jupiter. Okay, I'm not going to take time to edit. That that should be Jupiter there. And I think I'm pretty sure if I get farther out of this, we have we should have uh, Venus, and I know I'll have Venus in the other shots. So we'll get down to like 150, and no, let's cut out of this shot. So they were they're they're looking at and I'm gonna play a video after this one. I'm gonna upload this one tonight and then I'm gonna also upload the other video. And I got some really good shots of what I can show you uh, this here. I got this, but the idea that I'm gonna have I made a video and stored what I had from uh, looking at uh, some pretty good shots that they had because they're they're peeling back trying to get a look at ice on as much as they can and I'm catching some shots of it and doing that here's a shot of the Hubble from the Hubble getting a hold of ice on also so I'll scoot up on it and there's ice on from the Hubble now a guy on the tube put this on a colorization filter I didn't do this but it is the actual picture from the Hubble and then he put a filter on it and you could you get this here image of it out there in space so uh, it's from a long distance off at the other telescope that I showed in the other video it looks a lot uh, so it's gonna be interesting it's probably a good five kilometers I mean at least five it's at least five kilometers because it's uh, at least five miles probably inside it's close enough it's a ballpark figure it right now because it's still a hell of a long ways out so, and I think they've got one more colorization of it, and it's ice on. This is ice. And here's the most dramatic shot you're probably going to see it ice on so far away the heck out. And it doesn't look too much different than what we've seen. So you can thank BP Earthwatch for this. He's the one that did the colorization on this shot from the Hubble. So, thanks BP Earthwatch on YouTube. So, anyway, uh, and... I'll try to get more confirmation on this being ice on, but I, pr I pretty much somewhat trust uh, BP Earthwatch. Uh, he's on the tube, and I'm pretty for sure that this is probably the Hubble. So thanks for colorizing him.
uh, basically filters. It, it doesn't distort anything.